the legendary radio titans, Walton and Johnson. If you don't like this show, your money back. Guarantee. Well, yeah, we can do that here. Money back guarantee. We've always had that. Tucked away in their corner studio of a Houston high-rise, it's John Walton and Steve Johnson. For more than three decades, Walton and Johnson have been defying radio industry odds and their own management. Somebody is probably going to be screaming at us pretty soon to apologize for that. Well, that isn't likely. But who would have thought these shock jocks together since Ronald Reagan's first term would still be blistering people daily in a dozen radio markets from Florida to Texas. And now back on WRNO News Talk Radio 99.5. I would have doubted you. Uh, I would have thought probably not, but you just never know. In 83, when we put this whole thing together, it just seemed like something, to, kind of a lark, something to do, give it a shot, see what happens. We got to New Orleans by accident, basically. How many great stories begin just like that? One visit. They took us to uh, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse and that was it. <laughs> said, okay, I gotta have some more of this. And they signed on at WQUE, Q93. But New Orleans adapts to change rather poorly and digesting their show took time. It was just outrageous over the top. The, the salespeople rallied and, and they said, we're quitting, we can't sell it and about Six months later, they found out they could. They tested bigger markets in Dallas and New York, but were quickly lured back by WEZB B97. Their mix of satire, character voices, skits, and topical news dominated, unscripted, and always without a filter. We know what we want to say, we know what we want to talk about, but it's not scripted, it's not written down, and so we just jump in and go and see where it takes us. Their listeners are called the 10 percenters, those who actually get it. Mostly a younger 25 to 54 conservative male audience, not just along the Gulf South, but in the Gulf, on the oil rigs. That's our audience, man. I mean, these guys will find our, they'll find our show no matter where their ship is at, no matter what rig they're on. They'll, they'll scan around and listen from anywhere to Corpus Christi over to Fort Myers. That's Ken Webster Jr., or producer Kenny on the show. His job is to keep it on the tracks, but he says he could miss a month before any listener would notice. Well, now celebrities have taken time away from their busy acting day. Well, they said, we're going to pull that all-star game out of North Carolina. We're going to bring it over to New Orleans. These days, you can't say nothing or do nothing without somebody getting their panties in the wad. And, and as you've noticed by now, you don't see Mr. Kenneth, Mr. O, or Billy Ed. The characters of foundation of the show stay in studio. Believe it or not, uh, all the guys that we work with here at the station pretty much stay here at the station. You know how many times we've lost our job? 167 <laughs> times. At least dozens and Come dozens. On, man up. When you truly can't remember how many exact times you've been fired, you know it's not a big deal. And for Walton and Johnson, it's never been a big deal. In fact, it's been a pretty big key to their success. Advice Walton got from Don Imus back in the 70s. And he said, uh, the minute you care about getting fired, you're worthless as a morning talent. He said, you have to not care. They are not politically correct, but the Trump supporters are more political than ever before. People are walking around in a daze because Trump bitch slapped the media yesterday and, and the, the media doesn't know what to do. And I don't think young people really get yet when they say, oh, why are y'all talking politics all the time? It's like, because it's your life now. Everything that happens in Washington or at the state level, it invades your personal private life way more than it used to. Both credit the show's longevity these days to the fact that now they rarely see or even talk to each other after the show. That's probably the mistake a lot of people made when they had relationships because they'd go to do appearances together and hang out together and then pretty much burn out. Their Beatles moment came in 93 when they split up, but less than a year later they were back together and now determined to ride into the sunset, likely taking an art form with them. We're kind of like dinosaurs, there's nobody left doing it, so, and I'm pretty sure that whenever we're done doing it, nobody will pick up the stick and run with it. As long as we can keep making each other laugh, I think, like I said, it's genuine. It comes through on the air. We're not practicing it ahead of time. It's just what took place live at the moment. And it, it works. They're from and live in Houston, 
Yes, we definitely do know what it means to miss New Orleans. New Orleans remains their mistress. Like a lot of things in New Orleans, there's no explaining why something got popular, but once it did, they latched onto it. They've loved us for 34 years and counting, so we love them back. You feel like an American yet? Stay with us a little longer and you will. That's what this show does. If you didn't wake up feeling that way, you will real soon. Mm -hmm.